Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Manic Monday or Overreaction Monday or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm here, of course, at the Red Brick House where I seem to be all the time now, and I actually love it. Uh, every day this place literally changes and looks different than it did before, and I love it. I absolutely positively love it. I, I think the place is coming along great, and I appreciate all of your support as we've been doing this endeavor. Um, I have many, many loves in life, and one, of course, is the Dallas Cowboys, and trying to keep the record straight. The original reason why I started doing social media was at back basically about 15 years ago because Things that I kept hearing about with Tony Romo were always wrong. They would always say Tony Romo was a choker and can't win the big one and so on. But when you looked at actually the numbers and you dug deep, there were other reasons why the team didn't succeed. And some of those underlying elements are right there. Hopefully we've corrected some of them like karma with Jimmy Johnson going into the ring of honor and the Cowboys seemingly are doing some things different than they've done in the past. The fact that they actually made trades for Brandon Cooks and um, also uh, Stefan Gilmore. You know, maybe these guys are past their primes, but they are playing valuable time for the Dallas Cowboys. And I would bet that both of them, they look at probably bringing back next year. Um, the fact that we're bringing in Shaq Leonard um, tomorrow uh, for trying out, this may be the big one that you look at and say, you know, he may not be a big player, but it's a, for the first time, you're seeing the Cowboys decide we need to look outside of the place of just our, 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 our players that we believe in for some extra help to try and make a run. And if we'll see what kind of shape he's in, uh, he has had 60, 60, 65 tackles in the season as not a full-time starter. So maybe this will be a role guy. And if Dan Quinn wants him, I am all for it. And many, many times we always hear with the Cowboys what the talking heads will say. You know, they'll tell you that Dak Prescott sucks or Dak Prescott was only good because, you know, he had Zeke. Um, Zeke Elliott's no longer here and the Cowboys offense is thriving. You know, they'll say it was because of Amari Cooper. Well, Amari Cooper's gone. And the offense is still thriving. Last year, and after the Cowboys decided Kellen Moore was a problem, you know, we in the YouTube commu community, we could all see it. It's not that we didn't make plays and have an offense that was going, but we would get reckless at times. And some of the route combinations that we had, uh, we had everybody coming back, and some of the gadget plays were just ass ass. And so people would always say, well, Dak Prescott, you know, he's doing good for a guy who was drafted in the fourth round, but he doesn't have the talent of a guy like, let's say, Justin Herbert. Um, yeah. Here's what's interesting is, now, I think we can finally put to bed the whole Kellen Moore argument that, you know, Mike McCarthy doesn't know how to call plays, um, Brian Schottenheimer, whose father famously was, you know, Marty Ball, which was just running and running and running. And after you've been running, run it some more. One of the things that's lost with Brian Schottenheimer is the best year Russell had, Wilson had statistically with um, Seattle, Brian Schottenheimer was his offensive coordinator. And as we look at right now, here's where we can compare apples to apples. Right now, the Dallas Cowboys offense Number one scoring offense in the NFL. Number one scoring offense in the NFL. Dak Prescott, from last year to this year, here's where it gets interesting. Dak Prescott played in 12 games last year, okay? Let's actually pull up the numbers. Let's take a look at it, okay? Um, let me see, which way? Okay, there we go. Adjust the camera so we're not blocking my head. Although being eclipsed would probably be better. If we look at Dak Prescott, okay, from last year to this year, last year he had 12 games. Right now he's had 11 this year. The amazing thing is he's got as many wins as he had last year with one less game, 
eight and four versus eight and three. Okay, that's that's minor. If we look at the numbers of what he's been able to do, so far he's two passes short of what he threw in those games last year. The amazing thing is he has um I'm sorry, let me back that up. He has two less completions than he had last year with 24 less passes. His completion percentage is almost four points higher than it was last year. Touchdowns, he's got 23 last year, 23 right now with one less game. I'm assuming that he'll keep playing the way he's been playing and get another two, so he'll probably be ahead of that number with 12 games. Interceptions, this is the big one. He's got nine less interceptions than last year. His TD percentage is up from 5.8 to 6.2. His interception percentage is more than cut in half from 3.8 to 1.6. So as we look at this, as we look at this, it's pretty freaking insane to look at the numbers and say, well, Mike McCarthy doesn't know how to coach. Now, while I'm here, let's do this real quick here. Let's see. Justin, oh, for some reason we're not responding. Okay, let's try this. Let's reset it. Um, just bear with me for a second here. Peter's acting slow today. I was going to compare him to Justin Herbert uh, numbers-wise because uh, let's just start over. Why did I go to game recap? Okay. Okay, let's pull it up real quick again. I just want to compare Justin Herbert who they said is a much better quarterback than Dak Prescott. He's got all the talent in the world. And now he has the boy wonder as an offensive coordinator. Okay. We can actually, this is a great thing about everything is literally at your hands. Back in the day when I started doing this stuff, you ended up having to go through and look in magazines and pull it up and everything else. So head to head, regular season numbers. Dak is eight and three. Justin Herbert right now is four and seven. Completion percentage. We say that Justin Herbert is uh, you know got more talent. Sixty six to seventy yards per average pass. Dak is almost a full yard more. Yards per game. Dak is ten yards more. TD passes, Dak's got three more. Interceptions, they're the same. Rating, a 96 to 107. And, of course, Dak has got two rushing touchdowns. Justin Herbert's got three. So, we were told, we were told by everybody that Dak Prescott isn't as good as Justin Herbert. Now, they played each other twice. Dak Prescott's got both of those victories. You talk about playoffs. Justin Herbert's got none. They made the playoffs last year, and they turned the ball. He got four takeaways and still lost the game. Had a 26 to nothing lead and lost. Statistics-wise, Dak is killing him. But people to a man will still say, I'll take Justin Herbert. Well, here's what's cool. Here's, or here's where you can look at it and say, apparently... Kellen Moore isn't the boy wonder that we thought he was because Justin Herbert's numbers are way down from where they were before Kellen Moore got there. Dak Prescott's without Kellen Moore are substantially, 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 yeah, what she said, better than when Kellen Moore was here. So if anything, Kellen Moore was holding back Dak Prescott. Just look at the numbers here, and I know what it'll be. Now it'll be, well, 
without Mike McCarthy, you know, that it's because Mike McCarthy's calling plays. It's not Dak Prescott. It's funny. All of these things, reasons why Dak Prescott's not a good quarterback, always seem to go away. But the constant thing is they're still succeeding as far as the numbers go. All right, good people. We're about an hour and a half away from uh, Monday Night Football in a game that will probably be a snooze fest, but is still important as far as playoffs go because the uh, Minnesota Vikings are looking at getting a spot. All right, see you guys there. Peace.